I have seen dozens of ear candling videos where they show how ear candles can successfully remove earwax from an ear canal, yet none of them show before and after visuals of the actual ear canal. So in this video, I'm going to put ear candles to the test and I'm going to see once and for all whether or not they actually remove earwax from your ear. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Back in college, I was a licensed massage therapist and inside of the massage therapy world, it was generally accepted that ear candling was a great therapeutic way to provide relaxation. But some massage therapists would take this too far and start making claims that ear candling could remove earwax and even that it could cure ear infections and hearing loss. Here's the theory behind this. There are people out there who believe that when you light one end of this candle, it actually heats up your earwax and it creates a suction effect to pull that wax out of your ear canal and pull it into the candle. So by the time that you've burnt this candle down to about three to four inches away from the tip, if you put that fire out and then you cut open the remaining portion, you'll see a big glob of earwax inside of the candle. Well, I decided to run an experiment to determine whether or not this theory actually holds water. First, I have my test subject, Heather, who has known earwax buildup issues. Heather is a retired nurse practitioner and founder of Arizona Healing Alternatives. Second, I performed visual otoscopy to ensure that Heather actually had earwax inside of her ear canal. As you can see, she has a good amount of earwax and it is a very sticky consistency. If it was a black color, it would mean that it is dry and likely stuck in her ear canal. If an ear candle has any chance of removing this earwax, then this would be the exact type of wax it would be able to remove. Now there are two different types of candles that we use for this experiment. The first one is a traditional beeswax candle that has no protector tip at the end. The second candle that we use actually has a little tip at the very end of it that is designed to prevent dripping of hot wax into an ear canal. So this will be the second candle that we use on Heather. Next, I set Heather up to burn the first traditional beeswax candle without the protector tip in her right ear. Next to her, I set up an identical candle inside of a cup to use as comparison when we look at the contents inside. This will also let us evaluate the contents of the cup that might potentially be left inside of Heather's ear after candling. It takes about 15 minutes for these candles to burn down. The manufacturer's recommendations indicate that we stop the candle four inches away from the tip of Heather's ear. But to ensure maximum effectiveness, we're gonna push the envelope a little bit and carefully burn it down to about three inches. I'm gonna speed up the time lapse so we can see what we have inside the burnt candles. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut open the one that was in Heather's ear first. So I'm just going to start snipping at the bottom. It'll probably be harder to do this with the other type of candle since, no? Mm -hmm. Since it has that little plastic piece at the bottom? Oh, the plastic one? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right, so this is the one that was in her ear. Oh my goodness. Look at all that. If you ask me what that looked like, I would say that that looks like earwax. That, it, that definitely looks like cerumen, for sure. Um, and that is a lot of it. That would be what we would call a full plug inside of someone's ear. So that is a very substantial amount of, of material, we'll say, inside of the candle that was burning inside of Heather's ear. Now, the one that was burning inside of the cup, we can see that there's some, it's almost like soot in there. If we take and if I wipe my finger, some, it, it seems like soot in there. And that was for the first maybe five minutes of that candle burning. We got that smoke in here, but after about five minutes, no more smoke went in here. So I'm not sure if that was because smoke was being suctioned out of the cup at a certain point or whether or not it was plugged with wax at the bottom of the candle. So we'll see. So we'll open up this one and there is definitely material in here but it has a different look to it definitely has a different look I mean some of the material does look the same but it's definitely more what I would consider that ashy material almost like what's inside the cup 
seems a little more ashy. Now if you do a direct comparison of in the ear in this hand and out of the cup in this hand, they're definitely a different look, which is, it's interesting to see for sure. So. And those are both the ones without the plastic. And these are both the ones without that little plastic protector at the bottom of the candle. They're just straight candles. Now this is the moment of truth. Did the ear candles actually remove earwax from Heather's ear? Let's take a look. As you can see here, none of Heather's earwax was removed. In fact, there actually seems to be some ashy material inside her ear canal now that wasn't there before. If that was earwax inside of the candle, I have no idea where it would have come from because it didn't come from Heather's ear. Take a look at the side-by-side -side comparison, pre-candling on the left and post-candling on the right. You can see that clearly the same amount of wax is inside her ear before the candling as there was after the candling. But we're not done yet. We're going to actually go ahead and burn the second candle inside of Heather's ear that has the little protector tip down on the end of the candle. Okay, so we have the second ear candle. This one uses an actual little plastic protector at the bottom to protect the the wearer. I don't know if we can cut through it. We're going to try. Now, nope, can't cut through it. Cut I think we're going to unravel. Yeah. You can also cut from the top. All right, so we're unraveling the one that was in Heather's ear. Okay, so there's stuff coming out. And it's a little bit more, I mean, there's definitely stuff in there. So let me kind of put that back in so I can hold it up to the camera. Okay, that was the material that was in the second candle that was in Heather's ear. So it definitely has a, you know, a waxy consistency to it. Um, it's definitely firm, but it has more of the look of this, the one that was in the cup on the first run that we went through. So now I'm going to take a look at the candle that was in the cup on this second run. And we'll see what's inside of here. Okay. Oh, isn't that, so, that looks like if it's even more. Right. And that's that little, and that little plastic protector that was at the bottom that the first candles didn't have. Both of these candles have that protector. And the consistency of that, I would say, is nearly identical to yeah. the first, or the candle that was in her ear. So if we just do a side by side here, you can see the differences there. Okay, now if we compare cups. So this is the second cup. So the amount of material that is inside of the cups, you can see there, this here is the second cup, this here is the first cup. You can clearly see that there's different material in both of those, not as much inside of that second cup. And then to compare the first one of the that was in the cup, this is the first candle in the cup, this is the second candle in the cup, definitely different looks to them, more of a white powdery substance, or sorry, yellowish powdery substance in the first candle that was in the cup, more of a, what I would consider a, a waxy substance inside of the second candle that was in the cup. And then the biggest difference that I see here was the first candle that was in Heather's ear and the second candle that was in her ear. This is the first candle that was in her ear, the material that came out of there, and the second candle that was in her ear and the material that came out of there. Now for our second moment of truth. Will we actually see a reduction in the amount of earwax inside of Heather's ear canal? Let's take another look. Again, as you can see, the earwax hasn't changed at all. It hasn't moved at all. It hasn't removed any of the earwax. You can see the side-by-side -side comparison here again between the first time I looked in Heather's ear and after the second attempt at ear candling. 
Now I know that looking at the contents of that first candle that we put inside of Heather's ear would lead you to believe that earwax was being pulled out of her ear because that candle looked completely different than the candle that was burned inside of the cup. But visualization doesn't lie. It clearly indicated that there was no earwax movement. There was nothing that would indicate that it pulled any kind of earwax out of Heather's ear canal. All right, now that we know for sure that ear candling does not remove earwax, we need to go ahead and talk about some other issues surrounding this as an alternative therapy. The first thing is, is that if there was some kind of suction effect that was created by the ear candle, we wouldn't see smoke billowing out of the bottom of the candle. On top of that, if you did get a suction effect that was strong enough to pull earwax outside of someone's ear canal, it would likely rupture the eardrum because it's just three little thin layers of epithelium and collagen. The second thing is, is that despite what anyone tells you, you're not going to have any impact on the middle ear space, the eustachian tube, or the inner ear. The eardrum actually blocks off the ear canal and separates it from the inner ear and the middle ear. So unless you have a perforation inside of your eardrum, you're not going to be pulling any kind of materials outside of those spaces if it could do so in the first place. And if you do have a perforation inside of your eardrum and you drop any hot wax from that candle inside of your ear, you're going to be looking at having surgery to get it out. And lastly, the smoke that plumes from the bottom of an ear candle for a few minutes before it actually gets plugged up with the beeswax can leave that soot-type material inside of your ear canal, which can have its own negative health implications. In fact, they've done studies to determine that children who grow up in households with smokers are at higher likelihood for ear infections. So why would you want to risk ear candling giving you an actual ear infection? Now, of course, I didn't let Heather leave my clinic without performing cerumen management on her, so I went ahead and cleaned out the earwax inside of her ear canal safely with a curette. As you can see, I was able to completely remove all of her earwax in just a few minutes. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of Heather's ear before candling and her ear after professional removal of her earwax. All right, guys, there you go. Based on my little research project, ear candling proves to be an ineffective way to remove earwax from someone's ear canal. It also puts you at higher risk of starting your hair on fire, dripping hot wax into your ear canal, and just making you smell like smoke in general. Now, if you still want to do ear candling as a form of relaxation, then go ahead and knock yourself out. As for me, I think I'll go get a massage instead. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.